Is your project a mess? Do you put everything in one scene? Do you put everything in auto loads? Doesn't have to be this way. You're just confusing yourself, man. Come on, come on, I'll show you. I'll show you how to clean things up. Just, just follow me, buddy. All right, so we got this little game. Very, very simple. You're a little balloon and all your friends are grumpy and you gotta sing, sing, them, you gotta sing them lullabies so they can take a nap and go to sleep. But they're evasive, they're all over the place. So it's very simple, but I wanted to make it as kind of a template and a, a little demo. There's just enough going on that there's a bunch of different files, a bunch of different scenes. So I think it's a good example for showing how to split things up. Keeping the files as simple as the game is. Okay. You got some guys, you got some levels to transition, you got a little cutscene at the end, and then it fades out and it goes back in and you go back to the main menu. And that's it. So let's look at the file system. I'm just gonna go over each folder and show you what's in them top to bottom. So we get the assets folder. You keep all your music and visuals in here. If the game gets a lot more complicated, I'll put subfolders in here. Like you would have a music, sound effects, and uh, whatever else, you know, then in the sprites, or if you're 3D, you would have like a models thing here. Models, rigs, materials, textures, that kind of thing. Separate it like that. That sounds good to me. That's pretty straightforward. Global. This is for auto loads. You want to have all your auto loads in one place because they are loading at the beginning and auto loads can be dangerous. People use auto loads a lot and I think uh, a lot of the time they get used haphazardly and it can cause you a lot of problems and it can get pretty confusing. So it's good to have them all in one place so you know where to go when your auto loads screw up because they will screw up and you will get confused. <laughs> Autoloads are another topic. We'll, we'll go into them maybe in another video, but uh, be careful with autoloads. That's all I got to say. Okay, so then the scenes. The scenes is the big one. That's where most of your game's going to go. So I have this divided into three folders. I have a main scene. Everything is going to be run out of this scene. The main scene is what I have selected as the main scene. <laughs> um, under Godot project menu. So what that means is when you click this, this normal arrow button rather than the, the little uh, run play scene, when you do play game, play the project, it starts from whatever you have selected here in the project menu. And it will also be the scene that runs when you start, when you export your project, when you get an exe out, that's gonna be whatever runs when you, you know, when you run the game. So I like to have that up at the top and I want that to be around always. So it's going to interact with every part of the game. So that's why I want it up at the top. So the file structure reflects how the game is running. So we have three folders here. I'm going to do them bottom to top because that's that makes more sense with how the game runs. We have the menu folder. I like to keep the menu separate because they're very different and they, they usually interact with each other. We have the main menu, which we're in right now. This is instanced in the main scene. Next, we have any kind of sub menu. So I have a pause menu. This is part of the game, but I'm still gonna keep it over here just with the other menus. It's just convenient to know, okay, the menus are over here, you know, even, even if it's something that shows during the game, I still keep it with, keep the menus all together. Okay, next we have the game folder. This, similar to the main scene, is a scene that is going to handle everything that's happening in the game. This is just a node 2D. It has a script on it. That's the important part is that it, like the script is where most of your game stuff is going to be coordinated. So whenever I'm switching scenes, that is something that the game is going to do. It's going to get rid of one level and instance another level. The player is in the game scene, not in a level, because when I switch levels, I don't want to have to make a new player and change all the player data. If the game had HP and stuff like that, then you wouldn't need to keep track of the HP and make a new player and then set the HP again. It'll just stay with the player object. And we can do that because we have this game world at the top level. 
And then the levels are going to be inside the game world and the player is going to be inside the game world separate from the levels. They can still all interact because anytime anything is instanced, collision objects can all interact with each other. So you don't need the player in the level scene to interact with the level scene. Then we also have the world camp and we have the info layer, which we'll look at next. And then the pause layer, which we already looked at. That's the pause layer from the menus. Finally, we have the debug folder. This has anything that you're going to use for debugging. So like this is a display that's going to give us information about what the player is doing. Let me show you. I'll show you. Showing's easiest. Show, don't tell. Always show, don't tell. So you see up here, the top top left, the font sucks, but uh, you can see it says player floating false and it's giving me the velocity. So I can see I'm not moving left or right. That's the X and the Y values. I still have vertical velocity for some reason. I think it's, oh yeah, it's sending me downwards. That's the gravity. So I have a hundred vertical velocity down. Uh, negatives up, Y it's down. That's because if you're confused about why negative negative Y is up and positive Y is down, it's because when computers were invented, they thought about them as a visual, visual representation of a page of a thing you would read. So in the West, in English, we read top to bottom, left to right. So zero is there, zero, zero is there. And then as you go across, X gets bigger. And then as you go down, Y gets bigger. So the only time up positive would make sense is when you're doing like physics simulations, which is not actually a very common thing in graphics. Um, like even when it, it's only when you you have gravity downwards, you know? So like if you're going four directions, it doesn't matter whether up and down is positive, negative. Actually going down seems, seems I don't know. You know, you know what I'm saying? Okay. But the point is, this is, this is debug, right? So when you hold space in this game, you float in place and gravity doesn't affect you, uh, but you can't, you can't pop yourself up. You can just move left and right and then shoot. So, so when I was debugging that, I wanted a little thing to tell me when I was floating and when I wasn't. So I got that there. So anything in the debug folder is something that uh, shouldn't affect the game. I should be able to delete this and not have any problem in the game. Like if something's going wrong with anything in this debug folder, it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't be that I am like, can't release my game because the debug is crashing. The debug doesn't work. Who cares? Delete it. Get rid of stuff you don't need. Whenever I make like a test room or anything just to, just to run around and test stuff out, I put it in the debug folder because that's not part of the game. I don't care about it. It can go away. Um, and it is instanced in the game world here but I could get rid of this. It, it's not that important, you know? And you gotta make sure when you're doing this that your your actual game stuff references the stuff in the debug folder as little as possible if you wanna be able to get rid of it later and clean your stuff up. Because I make a lot of stuff in here that I don't actually need for that long. Like I'm just doing experiments, you know, and then I get rid of it. So yeah, that's why I have this. You put an underscore on it. I put an underscore to differentiate it from the other folders and also to sort it at the top. So if I had a folder in here that was called um, areas, for instance, even though I have levels in there, but that's just an example. See how it sorts, because it's alphabetical sorting and underscore goes to the top. Actually in Godot 4, I think underscore goes to the bottom, but it's fine as long as it stays away from this stuff. Stay out of here, I don't want you in there. So that's why I put an underscore on it. I suggest you do too, it's a good tip. So that's debug. So now, the most important part. Game folder. First I have the characters. I have a player. I have an enemy, mad guy. So the base guy is stuff that it's gonna be the same. These guys are gonna have almost the exact same stuff except for the sound effects are gonna be different. like. This guy makes his little snoring sound. The player makes a chime sound when you sing, right? So I don't know why this guy has this. He shouldn't have it. Maybe he's inheriting off the player and not the, no, I don't know. That's weird. That's fine though. 
He doesn't use it, but he has that node for some reason. I don't know why. But they share the sprite. So the sprite is just different texture regions. So I have this set differently. I have the region set differently between the player and the bad guy. But otherwise, the file's exactly the same. You can split that up into two files if you want, you know. But these are so similar, I didn't even bother. I just drew them all. Um, so because of that, they can all share the same texture. Whenever I do something like that and I have inherited scenes, I just put them all in the same folder unless it gets like really, really complicated with levels and levels of inheritance. But I like to see, okay, here's these that are the same type of this. And I know, I know that. I know that all of these are the same type of thing. Then anything that they use, I will put in a subfolder. So this is the music note that you that you sing when when you go boop. <laughs> when the player sings, he shoots one of these music notes off. So because these things use this, it gets its own subfolder. The levels are a little more complicated. We have the game world. It doesn't start with a level. Rather than the inheritance, like the characters, each of the levels are their own individual scene. They don't inherit from each other. I do this because there's actually a lot of differences in the nodes they have. Inheritance is more about sharing a type of node that you're not going to change at all. But for this, I have different number of enemies. I have different number of paths that the enemies work with. I'm not going to talk about the the way I made the game in this, like the, the mechanics of it. I'm just going to talk about the file structure in this video. In another video, I'll go over how I did all this stuff. But... Um, for this, I just want to talk about how to set it up. But just know that, for instance, the space scene, you don't have to go to another level up at the top, so it doesn't have it doesn't have an area that lets you transition. So they're all very different. They have some of the same stuff, background. So you could you could do that too, you know, you could do a similar thing where you have a base level and you inherit from the level. But for this case, I wanted to just show an example of another way to handle some kind of inheritance. So what so what these do share is a script. They all share the base level script. So because all these rooms that are all individual, they're all one type of thing, they all share this base level script. So I put this up at the top. I like to do it like this. I like to keep stuff that's very common in a top level and then put more different stuff in subfolders, if that makes sense, stuff that gets used by things. So that's these folders. If I get a lot more, I try not to get too deep. I try to keep it to like six subfolders. I'd rather go wide than long, if that makes sense. So in the game, if I start having other types of constructs other than just characters and levels, like like weapons or items or things like that. I'll make more I'll make more subfolders under the higher level things. So if I have a networking, I'll put a networking subfolder up in under the scenes folder, you know, or settings or any type of thing like that. Cuz once you once you start to get really deep for me, you ever put something in a drawer and just forget it exists? <laughs> That's how it is for me. So I like to be able to see everything I have relating to something, right? So I'll add like five or six different subfolders under a top level rather than going, okay, this is the thing and then this, the note and then the note has music and then it does different types of notes and keep going down subfolders, subfolders. But at the same time, you don't want to just drop 15 to 20 scenes in one folder because that gets really, really confusing. It's much harder to look at so, you know, I try to think about how many scenes do I put in one folder and then how many folders do I put in one, one folder. For me, it's way easier to differentiate the folders from each other than it is to differentiate the scenes from each other. I don't know why. Maybe it's they're all the same icon and these are all different. <laughs> so that's the file structure. You can, you can do this differently. I'd almost say that I'm kind of doing things two different ways with the characters and the levels. And you might organize these differently. Those are, I just wanted to give two examples of ways you might want to think about 
making subfolders and where you put your stuff in relation to each other. One last thing I want to talk about. So I have this animations. I'm not going to talk too much about resources because resources are a big topic and I have another video where I go real in depth on resources. So check that out. But what you need to know, okay, let's get a level up here. So when we clear the level and all the guys are, are sleeping, right? They're all calmed down and sleeping. We get this blinking arrow. Now, animations are resources. Resources are files. Anything that is a file in this file system, Godot loads as a resource. Scenes are resources, scripts are resources. These are, uh, no, assets. Audio files are resources, sprites are resources. They are imported. They are loaded into memory. And anything that is a resource, materials, see this is script. Uh, what else is a resource? Textures, a normal map, you can make a new one. Materials, anything where you click on this button and you can pick one and hit load, that's a resource. You can also hit save on any type of resources. Animations are resources. So all of these levels are gonna use the same animation. I want these all to blink the same way. Just like I'm using the same sprite for all of these arrows, I want them all to use the same animation. But the files are different. So by default, they're not going to. I duplicated this. What you can do then is you can make one, you can save it, and put it somewhere. So I put that type of thing in its own folder alongside the stuff that's using it. So I save this animation here, and then in the other levels, you load it like that. And then this arrow uses the same animation here. So this is a very simple example where it just blinks. If I change this and I save it, it changes everywhere. So now the it's invisible for a little shorter amount of time, right? Because I don't want to have to go through each place and change them all. So, so that's everything in the file structure. I'll say you can do stuff differently than, than I'm doing it, but the important thing is to make a plan for yourself and stick with the plan and do things the same way and you'll be much less confused with it. You'll be much less likely to step away from it for a month and then come back and be like, what is all this? I have no idea what's going on. You'll be much less likely to encounter a bunch of bugs and be pulling your hair out and say, oh, I have to redo the whole thing from scratch. If you make a plan from the start, don't just do it haphazardly, you know, it's worth it. It's worth it from the start to make a plan and stick with it. This video was made as a companion piece I did for Shantanu Tiwari's blog, Python for Engineers. Link in the description below. It's a good blog. He's got Python articles, uh, career advice articles, and other game dev stuff. A lot of Gido articles and tutorials and stuff. So it's good information. Go check them out. I'm not done yet. Next one's about how to name your stuff. Name your files, name your nodes, name your everything. That is also very important. Go click on it. Go, go click on it right there. You impatient? Go click on it. What are you waiting for? You're still here. Let me uh, put my YouTube voice on for a minute. <laughs> Comment, like, and subscribe. The kind of stuff I do on this channel. I do more uh, Godot stuff like this. The kind of stuff I want to make is when I was learning Godot, I would go to Google and I would go to YouTube and I would type something in and I would find nothing, find absolutely nothing helpful at all. Nobody was talking about it. So I'm going to fill in those gaps. I'm going to swoop in. I'm going to be that hero. I'm going to be your hero. So if you want to see that, who cares about liking? Who cares about subscribing? Ring that notification bell. Then you'll really know. Come up right on your phone. I also post devlogs about my game, Hot Worlds. Beat em up fighting game. If you're interested in that, you can go click on the oh, playlist. Got all kinds of stuff. Video over.